I'm going to give you four words to respond to. Go! Stop! Clap! Clap! <laughs> jump, jump! What we're going to do is to start off with some warm-up work, which gives us some hooks into the kind of world that we are entering into. What Richard III presents us with is a dangerous world. So now, when I say stop, it means go. When I say go, it means stop. When I say jump, it means clap. When I say clap, it means jump. Stop. Clap, clap. Jump, clap, go. Stop. <laughs> when I've begun to reverse the words, how did it feel? Quite tense. Yeah, you feel very tense. Because I've changed the rules of things so much, you're in this sense of, I don't know what to do next. And we kind of have a natural disposition, don't we, where we want to please. Because I've set myself up as the leader in this game, haven't I? So I've got the authority, and therefore I've got the right to change the rules. How much more right has a king got to change the rules? And that makes your position even more vulnerable when you've got a king like Richard III, who has the power to completely alter your reality. Imagine if we'd played that for, say, half an hour. How would you have begun to feel about me? Would have hated you. It's fine, I'm not taking it personally, but that's the reality. In our rehearsals for Richard III, we've looked very much at this is how the people in that court feel. They are living on their nerves because we don't know what's going to happen next, that it's like living in any autocratic state. In our work with students, we're approaching the plays as performance texts. And that means we're exploring a range of practical strategies that engage the young people in doing. We are Stop. asking students Stop. to physically and emotionally, as Go. well as intellectually, engage with the content of these texts, just as we would with Go. a group of actors. And what we know from seeing actors Stop. work over Go. a period of time on a play is that they develop this Stop. tremendous sense Go. of ownership of this material. And that's what we really want young people to have. But what I'm going to ask you to do is respond to some images that I am going to give you titles of. I'd like you to now make an image based on the line of text. My kingdom stands on brittle glass. OK, and ten seconds. Ten, nine. In deciding which lines of text to use that we're then going to ask students to create images from, it's very useful if those lines of text are, are thematically linked to the journey that we're taking the students on. Two, one, and freeze! Brilliant. My kingdom stands on brittle glass. Somebody looking as though they're going to get hurt by this glass. Are, these the, are we shards of glass? We're the castle. Oh, you're the castle, <laughs> oh my gosh! But you're a leaning tower <laughs> castle. <laughs> Poor foundations, very good. So we've got this tyrannous regime, this tyrannous leader, who um, is changing the rules of our country, who's making us all feel as though we can't trust each other. But he is saying his kingdom stands on brittle glass. What does that suggest about how he's feeling? So what we're beginning to do, I suppose, is set some depth charges for students so that when they come to the text, they're coming to it with a sense of, OK, I understand the world in which these words are being said. So um, what, what does doing something like that do for our students? An image, the language, it puts the language on its feet and in front of you so you can see it. Yeah. It makes it very um, accessible for students yeah. doing it like this. Shakespeare, of course, is a master of metaphor. And yet when we actually embody the richness of the metaphor physically, it becomes much clearer to the students, the genius of the language, actually. Obviously, we have to remember quotes, and it's very useful for us to do that. What does this kind of it work do? It makes you drag the, the key word out, doesn't mm. it? So, so which of those words do we need to try to, to, to make? Yeah. Which, which is the important word in that? I think that's a really good point. Which, which words tell the story of the line? We know that here we, it's the brittleness of the glass and the danger of that that we're pointing up in that line. What, what structure are we putting in ex this exercise that makes it very achievable for students? That it, so it isn't like scary, go off into a group and make something. What, what are the boundaries that we're putting in place? It's teacher-led as well. It's teacher-led. It's controlled. Yeah. It's also the parameter that I've put on it that I'm giving you a time limit. Yeah. I'm not saying, away you go with that line of text. And just that time pressure means you get students cooperating in a way that they wouldn't if you'd given them 15 minutes to do that and think about it and talk, because then you have room for arguments to come out of it. So it's, it's that time pressure that is really, really key to the success of this exercise. And we're going to look at Act 4, Scene 2. It's the scene just after Richard has been crowned as Richard III, King of England. How's Buckingham feeling, do you think? 
How's he feeling? Pretty smug. Absolutely smug. Job done. Satisfaction. Looking forward to getting my reward. I'm going to light some candles, um, and I'm going to be in role as Richard the King. And you are all going to be in role as Buckingham, his right-hand man. And any of you can talk to me at any time. Buckingham. My <coughs> Lord of Buckingham. Here we are. This is it. King of England. Suits you, my liege. Thank you, Buckingham. <laughs> Do you think so? Yes. <laughs> Everything we have worked for, mm -hmm. you and I. Yep. Hmm? We, yes, exactly. Yes, Buckingham, of course. I could not have come this high without your aid and your assistance. I have one last thing to ask you. I wonder if you can guess what it may be. Do you have some letters that need opening, my lord? I have no time for your dull wits. Young Edward lives and his brother in the tower. Do I need to make it more clear for you? But they're only children. They will be men one day. Well, maybe when they're men, should they pose a threat, then perhaps we could look to dispatch them. They're no threat now. They are a threat. Chop, chop, Buckingham! What is your answer? You will do as you wish. Will you? Of course. In everything but this. Now, I can see that you are of two minds about this, so... You may have a short while to think to see whether I can trust you. The key thing about the in-role person is that they are playing devil's advocate. So if we have a group of students who go, yeah, no problem. We've got to kill those princes. And the teacher in role might go, Pfft, killing children, come on, that's a big deal. Or if they're getting resistance from the Buckinghams as we get in the scene, then they're playing, come on, Buckingham, where are you? Where's your loyalty? It's kids we've killed before, whatever they're presented with, they play the opposite of, in order to push, 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 push the class to think about that character dilemma in that moment. What do you feel about that exercise? Well, because it was teacher-led, mm. um, if, you know, one of the students said something that was quite obscure and not, not towards a the text, then you could have turned it around and led it into yeah. the actual text. I think that's really, really important. I think yeah. that the role can be used to both embrace all of the things that the pupils come up with, but also guide mm. and steer, I suppose, yeah. through, the, through the narrative of any scene or story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any, anything else? This situation did encourage deeper thinking for the story, for what might happen. And, and that depth comes, I think, from standing in the shoes of the characters, mm -hmm. actually putting yourself in the situation of a scene and finding out what is at stake by playing it. Well, it's just nice when I said something and then Phil contradicted it, but you were able to take that as the uncertainty of a... Mm. a uh, yeah, I think that's really it? important, because, of course, kids are much less polite right. than you are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they'll jump in going, you can't do that, you're a murderer! You know, yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll be much, much more animated um, than we are, given the right amount of uh, information at the beginning of the scene. Mm -hmm. I know some people can feel uh, very nervous about the in-role approach because I think there's a feeling of it being acting and teachers have often um, expressed the feeling that if they, if they don't feel they're very good actors then they can't do in-role and I think that's that's really not my view of in-role. I, I used to be very nervous about doing in-role work when I um, when I used to work, work full-time in schools and what I began to do was just talk as if I was myself, you know, as myself but with a different set of circumstances and then it's really easy, because all I'm doing is modelling a situation. I'm modelling a, a conversation that we are going to have, and I'm inviting you to be engaged in that conversation. And if we were then to go and um, move into really looking at the scene in detail, what difference will it make? It's familiar. The text would be familiar. 
and maybe encourage expression, really feel the part. We always work with an edited scene first of all before we engage the students with the whole text so that when they get the whole text it doesn't come as such a, a shock to them. They've got something to root their understanding of it in. There can be a fear among students and among actors of having big long pieces of text to read. So the way we can get around that is just by taking bite-sized chunks, reading punctuation mark to punctuation mark. Cousin of Buckingham, my gracious sovereign. Give me thy hand. Thus high. By thy advice and thy assistance. Is King Richard seated? And we'd stop at various points and talk about what's going on. Who is King Richard, first of all, saying stand all apart to? Uh, lots of other people. Yes, so we, there, there was a very public scene and now he wants to have a private moment with Buckingham. What Shakespeare also does is he writes in his words that the characters say stage directions. So that other characters know what to do. So who can anybody find an example of that? Give me thy hand. Give me thy hand. So all the time, as actors, what we're doing is look, we're looking for the clues in the text about what Shakespeare is telling us should be happening. We often do our um, introductions to scene where students are back to back. Why do you think we do that? It makes you concentrate on what makes you concentrate on the words you're saying, and I suppose it also gets rid of our self-consciousness of having to act in any way in front of somebody else. Stand all apart. Stand all apart. Cousin of Buckingham. My, my gracious sovereign. sovereign. Give me thy Give hand. Give me thy hand. Then I'm going to stop you there. Obviously, you would be carrying on with your students, but what we're doing is just getting them to taste the words in their mouths. And as we've said, some of these words will be familiar to them. And we've already rooted our understanding by reading it punctuation mark to punctuation mark. Now what we're going to do is to read the scene again, but whisper the scene through now. Off you go. Stand all apart. What does that do to the scene? What sense does it give you of the... Subversive, isn't it? Subversive. Yeah. What else? Sinister. Sinister. Private. Lovely. Private. Private. Mm -hmm. it, did it feel as though it suited... Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. That conversation? Yeah, yeah. It gave... What did it, what did it do to the relationship between Buckingham and Richard? Conspiratorial. Conspiratorial, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And maybe that will suit some of the lines. We're not saying that we could play all of the scene like that, but it opens up some possibilities that we didn't have before in it. Starting at different times, I'd like you to shout the scene to each other. Off you go. Stand, Stand all apart. Give me the hand. Thus high. Did that feel as though that was ever the right way that those words needed to be expressed? Yeah. It can be, I don't care. You know. it, could, it, it could be, I apps, I rule this court. Cousin of Buckingham. My gracious sovereign, we've got it. Yeah, absolutely. What we're doing here is opening up interpretive possibilities through play just in very simple, contained exercises. Again, the fact that we are giving students something else to think about other than the words is the key. And therefore, the student is released to make some discoveries. This is the key thing about the work of the RSC. We are interpreting plays, interpreting text. There is not one way, and there is not a right way. It is about all the options that these words present to us.